Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to a brand new show today. We have the legend of Indian chess, the second grandmaster of India, GM Dibyendu Barua with us today. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic show. There's a lot of things that we are going to talk about. Uh, firstly, I would like to welcome all the viewers who are watching this live. Uh, Welcome to one and all and today's I would like to show you today's thumbnail that we have for the show that is Grandmaster Barua uh, who is uh, on the screen and also uh, one of you know the persons responsible for popularizing chess especially on a big big scale in his state West Bengal of course the first GM and also in the entire country uh, so it's an absolute honor you know India has currently 66 GMs first one was Vishy Anand in 1987 and Barua became a GM in the year uh, 1993 if I'm not mistaken but we will talk more on this uh, when he arrives and uh, so without further delay let me welcome him on the show hello hello uh the welcome 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 to the show hello hello how are you i'm good how are you doing yeah fine fine no, just uh one thing i just want to tell that uh, you made slight mistake okay uh, i became grandmaster in the year 1990 1990 yeah it's not not 93 it's 91. 91. Yes, exactly. I was I was slightly confused. So I was like, I will ask <laughs> when he comes. I, I was reading a lot about you today. Uh, and you know, at some point, I was uh, so, so um, excited that you were coming because the number of achievements that you have in your chess career are simply phenomenal. And uh, I mean, I, I saw your Wikipedia page. There are not many things written there. I don't know why, but there have to be much more. Uh, you have achieved so much. So, so how how is uh, how is everything going thank right you for now? Inviting me. Yes. Yeah. Thank. You for, first of all, thank you for inviting me in, uh, on your show, and you are doing lovely, and you are promoting chess all over the India, and it is it's my pleasure to be on your show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very kind of you. Uh, and how, how is the life going on right now in lockdown? How, how are things? Oh, well, it is, it is difficult to say that uh, I'm very well. It is, I think, all, uh, all of us struggling. Yeah. And uh, definitely we are, through, we are going through a very, very difficult situation, right? And for the last three to four months. And... Uh, Especially for chess players, I believe that our schedule is not that much hampered because, uh, as you know, uh, you are also there in you are also in from the same same field, and uh, because we can keep ourselves busy mm. uh, now also, it is a, through online uh, tournaments, through online uh, coaching preparation, and so on. So, in general. Uh, I think we all are keeping ourselves busy. And I could see that uh, in the last uh, couple of months during this lockdown, the number number of uh, online tournaments has increased a lot. Yes. Uh, more or less, I think every day, there are say five, 10 or maybe more uh, tournaments are organizing, uh, held uh, all over India, all over world. So now people are enjoying. Fantastic. Yeah, that, that's the beauty of chess. And uh, I guess you are also very busy with not just playing, but also teaching. I think you are also teaching a lot of youngsters. Yes, yes, because we, ha I have, uh, we have an academy. And uh, uh, because of the current situation, uh, we are also doing it uh, virtually. And online training, we, are, we have started since April. Okay. I would like to tell the viewers that uh, Dibyendu ji has one of India's largest uh, chess academies. Uh, it's called DDDBCA. Uh, but more on that, uh, we will come to it, to it. I have actually prepared a presentation for today. Uh, 
uh, and I would like to go over a few slides. There are some amazing pictures which you have sent me, uh, which I would like to talk to you about all of them. So, so shall we go over them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so the first picture that I see is this very, very, very cute one. Uh, how old are you at this time? I don't, I don't know which year it is. I think it must be uh, 72, 73, because I started in 72 uh, when I was six years old. Okay. So this must be 73, 74, something like that. I don't know. No. But uh, because someone, so, I mean, actually what happened during this lockdown period, I just went through all my uh, photos uh, and then I found this one. And it is not mentioned which year, so I, it is difficult for me to say. A few things that stand out from this picture are, first of all, your intense concentration. And I see that a lot of people are surrounding you uh, while you are playing. And your opponent also looks like someone who is not your age, someone older. And the chess pieces, you know, they are, they are like, uh, seem like plastic pieces. I don't know, like it's such a wonderful uh, photo overall. Awesome. But possible it might be plastic boat possible <laughs> because uh, in those days I think in the 70s early 70s and uh, because you know I was uh, only I think uh, in those days as you know that uh, the, there are not much youngsters they, they used to play I mean it was a different kind of perception right yeah and uh, chess was supposed to be uh, for the older people to kill the time and you know I mean when I had started uh, Myself and my elder brother, both of us went for a tournament in Calcutta, in Kolkata, then in some open tournament it was. And uh, there were another uh, uh, brothers, they, boys they played, but after that they didn't continue. In fact, my father, I mean, he had to, uh, all my relatives, my father's friends, everybody they started saying my father not to continue uh my play i mean you know yeah because they thought that unnecessary they're spoiling me my father is spoiling me at that so point i think chess all... was not considered like a very main main sport yeah like everyone used to think if you are playing chess it's like you are doing something maybe not very ethical or it's just a game or something like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so that so that's why uh i used to get extra uh, you know, attention <laughs> whenever I wherever I went and played, and people were I mean all all were uh, uh, normal I mean uh, elder people you see, and uh, that's why they used to see how a young boy like seven years eight years he's playing hmm. and he's playing because in in those days they were not uh, age group tournaments right like like now okay. under six under eight under eight, ten twelve. So the, those uh, were not there. Only we had uh, sub junior, junior, and uh, of course the main uh, uh, open section. Mm. But then uh, sub junior means under seventeen, and junior was under nineteen in India. So we used to play that only. Mm. So that's why you could see that lot of crowds around me. Yeah. Did did Fisher's uh, nineteen seventy two match have anything to do with your chess? Because at that point you would be six years old. And chess at that time really became popular, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, not on me exactly, but definitely that match had uh, inspired my father mm. to continue me. Because, you know, I mean, when he uh, actually what happened, my father used to play chess with his friends. And just by watching, I uh, I learned chess. And one day I, su I suggested a move. And then my father wow. realized that uh, just uh, by watching the, the, their game, I learned the chess oh. game. And then he, then that time uh, that uh, Fisher Spassky match report started coming. Okay, it was I mean print uh, print media. Mm. Not that those days not uh, much uh, 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 like not like today. Yeah. There are not much uh, media, right? electronic media, and all Correct. these things. So there are only uh, uh, you know public uh, print media. It was it, it used to publish. So in like that in Calcutta also some Bengali newspaper they used to carry or English newspaper they used to carry. And then my father was inspired. He said, okay, there if there is a world championship match 
then there has to be some Indian Chess Federation and there has to be some state body. And then he inquired about all these things and then he learned, yes, there is a tournament and there is a West Bengal Federation. And then he introduced me to his tournaments. Wow, fantastic. Uh, and, and this is, uh, is this your father on the left? Uh... Yeah, yeah, that is my father and my elder brother Devashish who is uh, international arbiter and other two sisters, younger sisters, and all three they played in uh, some kind of national events, okay. right? Yeah, yes. Okay. So, so it's a chess family. So it's a family yeah. Chess family. Yeah. Uh, tell us. Even my. Yeah. Even Shaili, as of you know, Shaili is also an international master and herself is an international master. Yeah. International yeah. woman master and uh, one WGM norm she has got. Yes. But okay, so it is a chess family. We, we will come to Saheli. Uh, but here, uh, what was the profession of your father and your mother? Uh, like, how how was it at home? Were you uh, did you come from a humble background or a well-to-do background? How was it? No, it's just a middle-class family, and my father uh, was a uh, I mean uh, business person, man, but don't not that. I mean, just order supplier. So. And we used to stay in heart of the city, Central Avenue, it's called. Mm. And it is one bedroom, sorry, one room only. There are no concept of bedroom or dining room or living room and all this. It is one straight room. And that is that we had to make, uh, I mean, kept it like kitchen and this. Wow. So we're just from a very, very normal family, very uh, middle, middle class family. Amazing, amazing. And, and this picture is so nice, like everyone is so engrossed in the game. Uh, everyone is thinking about the moves. Uh, it must have been fun, yeah, to play chess together in the family. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, in those days, there were adjunct sessions. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Nowadays, obviously, there are no, yes. no adjunct sessions. And in those days, after seven hours of play, there used to be adjunct session, right? Yes. And... Uh, and most of my games um, uh, used to be, I mean, adjourned. And when it was adjourned, my father used to analyze himself alone ah. all the, throughout the night. And then the morning, next day morning, he used to tell me, <laughs> okay, you should play this, you should play that. And <laughs> So you had a second, he, you had a second uh, in, yeah. in your father. He never played, <laughs> yeah, he never played in any, any tournament. He was a very amateur player. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember uh, he used to play with Shahili's father and his friends. Uh, 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 I mean, and also they used to make lots of mistakes, you know. And both of their kings were in, would, would, be, would, would have landed in a check. And they could, they, both of them <laughs> did not realize, could not realize for a few moves. Okay. And at the end of the some position, suddenly they would see that someone's king is in under check. Uh -huh. And they started to re-establish the position, and that was not possible for them. So it was like they were just enjoying. I mean, they, my father used to enjoy just. Right. But see, he was so engrossed, and he was so, I mean, possessed with me. You know, he used to tell me. But one thing I would say, that he never scolded me for losing any game. In fact, whenever I, used, I lost, he used to treat me more. Mm. He used to say, okay, rasgulla you take. Oh, nice. You eat rasgulla more. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What was his name? Binay, Binay Bhushan Guru. He expired, we left uh, in 2015. Okay. But uh, he was, I mean, because of him only, whatever I am today. Right, right. And what about your mother? She was a housewife. I mean, she, does, she doesn't play chess. She didn't play chess. She never played okay. chess. Okay, okay. Brilliant. Okay, let's let's go to the next picture again. A, a beautiful one uh, that we have in front of us. Uh, yeah, this is against uh, Grandmaster Yuri Everberg. Mm. And uh, it was in 73. <laughs> you were seven and, years old. Uh, seven year old. Seven years old. And of course, he was given uh, a simul and I had the opportunity to play against him. And of course, I lost. Mm. And... Uh, that was and, and behind me is my father, you see, that there just space black standing. Oh. Just behind me. Uh, this one, yes. That was here. my father. Huh? Th uh, here, right? Uh, this person? 
behind you right behind you uh, exactly yeah, just, just right 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 stand you. just yeah, be yeah. stand mm-hmm. that is my point. and, and uh, playing our back must be a big honor because he was a big name right at, in the world of chess at that point yes now uh, that time that time i di- i could not i i, I mean uh, honestly speaking i didn't know much uh, because you know i mean i was very young uh, i'm 7 i didn't know who is our back only i knew that grandmaster so <laughs> so yeah yeah but uh, and i think uh, this is maybe your first uh, time you won some prize or is it like that no but you are already 13 right at this age uh, receiving second prize at nagpur tournament in 1979 yeah it is national junior ah national yeah 79 yeah uh, no not not first time i mean Uh, yeah. 78 i qualified for the nationals a from national b actually uh, 78 was my starting uh, successful year uh, in 78 i won a state uh, senior sub junior and junior then i qualified for the national national b and uh, uh, from national b i qualified for national a, okay. a and uh, this is year 79 at the age of 13 uh, actually you are the youngest ever to play in national a and even now i think uh, youngest ever indian to play in national 10. a at, tw- at the age of 12 years yeah but i don't know now why if, if the record is still there or not because nowadays all the youngsters <laughs> i don't know but anyway <laughs> in those days definitely 78 uh, to qualify in national a from at the age of 12 was really um, something great and uh, uh, i remember that uh, because i qualified uh, to the national that uh, mr mahalingam he presented me a blazer uh, in the, that was held in pollachi this uh, this uh, national b uh, unfortunately i don't have that picture otherwise i could have sent you right. and uh, uh, and the great uh, they did a, i mean Great felicitation they organized and they did me, oh. give me. So that was a fantastic 1978. And uh, uh, I would also add, like to add that uh, the same year, I think uh, the Khadilka sisters, Rohini also played. And, you know, I mean, it was a great honor to play with the Khadilka sisters. Yeah. absolutely like like the polka sisters you know yeah yeah, yeah. of course kadilkar sisters three sisters who dominated indian women's yes. chess for many years very many years and rohini was very very strong i mean she used to in fact she defeated me in that particular tournament and uh, freed her defense okay. <laughs> and she just she just crashed me so <laughs> <laughs> amazing uh, by the way we have a uh, ushnish guha in the chat who says as a child in my sports personality book i had two photos in chess section gm vishyanand and gm barua 90s nostalgia so he is uh, very glad to see you because he in his school book uh, you were one of the personalities uh, with anand okay thank you thank you so moving on uh, the next picture is equally intriguing this one is you playing against your first grandmaster yes yes uh, playing against uh, jeevsleys grandmaster jeevsleys yeah yeah and uh, it was in calcutta 1979 uh so international open some open tournament was uh-huh. there and i had the opportunity to play the first uh, grandmaster uh, Uh, real chess i mean sorry that uh, classical chess normal chess okay and you could see the the clock itself it was a german made those days uh, this was supposed to be very expensive one mm. and that, that the clock which is yeah 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 and and i i somehow you know seeing this there's a demo board and a young boy sitting there who's looking at the moves who would make it on yeah. the demo board i right, uh, those days uh, This, uh, this i think yeah this was held in uh, like alec like in the gorkish oh, really? and uh, yeah it is a alec and chess club they they organized this tournament and you could see that demo board and uh, yeah that boy someone who used to operate that demo board so that the the uh, spectators they can see amazing amazing by the way we have raven x who asked 
आज दिपेंदू सर दादा भालो तो <laughs> maybe they want they yes, want yes, couple of words in bengali from you how how are you yes that's what he asked oh ami ya ami bhalo achi okay apni kemon na wonderful <laughs> and uh, this is i think again yeah. against uh, gipsless but uh, you are playing yeah. blitz yeah this, yeah yeah this is against gipsless and i think i don't remember uh, i mean the one of the rest days maybe or so he was so keen to play against me so i was playing with him and you could see the spectators they were very much a lot of uh, you know the spectators were there right right actually you know these days when it's uh, you're facing a 12 year old talented youngster or a 13 year old as a player it's very terrifying yeah like because they are very strong uh, was that the case back then when people would face you they would be scared like we don't know how how the bendu would play and so on well that how i can <laughs> no but i mean in general <laughs> in general the perception add me or not but of course of course i think uh, you yeah, know maybe uh, they were scared of many people and because uh, from 79 uh, i mean 78 till i mean since 78 yeah my uh because i was i was performing well and my i was winning most of the tournaments so i think maybe yeah hmm. but what what was it about chess you know in all these pictures i see you so thoroughly engrossed with this chess set what was it about chess that you liked so much since a young age was it the competition in chess like the tournaments mm-hmm. or was it just the beauty of the game it is difficult i don't know how to explain this because normally i'm very honestly speaking i used to love football then chess okay. in uh, my in my earlier days okay so so, uh, so whenever i used to get time i used to play football only mm. with my friends okay. not chess i never used to uh, play chess i mean practice or because in in uh, honestly speaking that those days there were no no uh, coaching concept there were no coaches i mean uh, officially i mean coaches and coaching centers okay obviously there were alekin cheska only one club was there and uh, otherwise there were not uh, much uh, uh, coach coaching centers and all these things and uh, i didn't know why to go and whom to with whom to play and so on to have a practice and uh, mainly i was very much interested in football mm. so i just became a chess player i mean my father just took me to tournament games tournaments and uh, okay 6 uh, years i didn't have any performance 72 to 78 and after that all of a sudden the life has changed and after i played the nationals and then i uh, 79 was my first uh, international tournament uh, i mean uh, in uh, mexico uh, world under 14 oh. i was selected to present india mm-hmm. world cadet uh, that was the first time held and uh, it was my first uh, uh, foreign tour and uh, my first uh, uh, plane journey also. how was it and uh, it was uh, yeah it was absolutely something new i mean that those days and it was a very long journey to reach mexico and when we landed in mexico then Uh, luggages were not uh, there they, that luggages didn't reach so we got the luggage say after two or three rounds okay. and uh, and that tournament uh, i won bronze oh. and uh, i defeated maxim maxim drugi from usa who is also very strong gm right. and uh, and that game was a, i got a bronze prize for that unfortunately that game i don't have in my record oh. okay so and it's not in the database as yeah, well yeah say, that game no not is not there in the i database. think only so there is very unfortunate we have to ask max glugi if he has it with him yeah possible yeah maybe <laughs> so, so that's what i mean so, uh, just like that i mean just by playing i then realized that my i am uh, getting something some prizes i'm winning and then i am so i have so much busy with playing tournaments here and there and then i took it seriously and that to after 1979 mm. 
Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, you, you know, at that point, as you said, there were no real books available. There were, uh, you know, not too many things out there. So how did you improve at chess? You know, we, right now it's very clear. You have a trainer, you have so much material. There are good uh, coaches out there. You play in tournaments. For you, how was it? Yeah, it is nothing. I mean, just just by my own, uh, what do you say? Uh, how do I ex <laughs> put it here? I mean, uh, as you have mentioned, there is no... Nothing, no facilities now what the youngsters they get. And uh, I didn't know, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, there are no coaches. But only one uh, practice partner, not, uh, okay, he used to come to my house every Sunday. Uh, his name was, uh, uh, his name is Naren Maji. And he was very, uh, he was a very senior player, Bengal senior player. And he was very, uh, I mean, uh, we used to call him a, uh, you know, uh, Bangla player, that means original player. And he's used to, uh, everyone used to respect him because of his night's maneuvering. And he used to come and play every Saturday, every Sunday. And he used to have our lunch and uh, from morning he used to come. And we used to play some few games, serious games, two or three serious games. And that was the only thing, only practice I had. Oh my. Uh, and and then absolutely nothing. And, it would, uh, and my first book, uh, was, you know, uh, one complete defense to one PK4, <laughs> Pawn King 4. <laughs> and, and the other book was complete defense to one PQ4, Pawn Queen 4, that is E4 and D4. Okay. And uh, those two are the books. And opening, I used to play only free leader because I, ne I didn't learn uh, I mean, uh, from anyone. Uh, and E4, E5, NF3, D6. And uh, that's the fader. I used to play that only. And uh, somehow, right from the beginning, say from move number four or five, I used to struggle with black. <laughs> and somehow I had to manage. And once I managed, say, 12 or 13 moves, nothing happened. Then I was in my own zone, you know, then a comfortable zone. And then I used to uh, somehow swindle in the middle game. So uh, I was supposed to be good in middle game, good in end game, but opening was terrible. And, and I and think every uh, used to come prepared with leader, <laughs> and they used to get uh, advantage, and they used to defeat me very badly. As I mentioned, I mean, uh, uh, Rohini <laughs> defeated me very badly, and I okay, I don't have that game. Uh, and then at some point, I stopped playing leader. I realized that it is not going to give much. And then I switched to switch over to Petrov. Okay. Which is another uh, okay, Petrov is solid. It is not that uh, bad as as Petro, as Fridor. Hmm. And you know, I mean only these two openings I played till I became Grandmaster in nineteen ninety one. Wow. And then and because I always believed that uh, I, I used to take it as a challenge, I mean, because I didn't have any facilities, anything, and my father was very middle class. So I thought, okay, let me play with this. I'll struggle, I'll play, <laughs> I'll give my full time, devote myself on the board, and I used to play. Amazing. And, and I had a very good result with Petrov. Okay. You, you did well with the Petrov, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I had a very good uh, Petrov. I defeated many. Uh, strong grandmasters in uh, so uh, so Petrov is one of my favorite uh, opening with yeah, black. I think, if... I think this style has stayed with you. I think even now uh, you are not never considered as an opening expert or anything. But uh, once you get a good position in the middle game, you are very very dangerous. Even now. Yeah. Even now, I don't know. Now, now because all the youngsters, they have come up and they are well prepared. Yeah. Okay, let's move. Yeah, so this what one is, is a <laughs> picture of Victor Korchnoi. I didn't have a picture of you playing with him. But I think this was one of the most uh, memorable moments in your chess career. When at the age of just 16 years old, when Korchnoi was world number two, you managed to beat him. 
and that yes. was at the lloyds bank in uh, uh, 80 what was it 84 82 82 82 london lloyds bank yeah T- tell us a bit about that uh, thing because i think beating korchuna it's like today this youngster someone very talented let's say nihal or pragnananda or gukesh beating fabiano caruana yeah something like that <laughs> okay yeah in a way yeah the, yeah this one this game was uh, this uh, played in uh, london lloyds bank tournament in 82 and uh, uh, you know i mean i didn't know the, before playing with the english team i mean because the, those days uh, there were no computers no internet facility so when i arrived in uh, the tournament hall and that too uh, i was late about 5 or 6 minutes late and there were other indians were playing Uh, i think pavin was also there and parameshan was there mm. tn parameshan international master and uh, you know all of them were very much scared i mean what happened to barua he is not uh, he is not alive and the game started and i am playing with uh, koshnoy which was big deep, big uh, a big thing and uh, and at, at the moment i entered they all came and said hey, go and rush and see whom we are playing right. and then i saw uh, at the entrance uh the pairing i saw him playing with koshnoy and i was having white then i there is uh, i mean when i saw the first that i am playing with koshnoy i was a bit uh, nervous tensed of course and then i saw i, I am yeah, of course uh, because he is uh, number 2 right. he was number 2 and then uh, i saw i am playing white hmm. so i thought okay at least uh, opening part uh, in the, i'll try my best and uh, and uh, at least i am having white so i not lose so quick so i'll i'll give fight so that was my initial thoughts okay and and i'll try my best to draw uh and then game started and it was a uh, gaiko piano which i play normally hmm. and uh, uh within few moves shall, he, shall we quickly he, go go through the game right now is it okay yeah yeah sure okay so uh, this one is and then he castle long yeah i'm just uh, getting the game so because it was a phenomenal uh, game so you yeah, were white game. yeah i was white it began as the uh, uh, italian game castles knight f6 mm. d3 d6 c3 everything is pretty normal until now and yeah he played this g5 which i mean black should be yeah, now, comfortable now is, yeah black is comfortable yeah, now now the all the youngsters and everybody will criticize my <laughs> bishop g5 bishop, bishop g5 exactly <laughs> exactly because bishop is out of yeah. and, and what korchnoy did here was smart he was like he provoked h3 and went back so that then he can break with g4 at uh, at the right moment yeah. Ah okay so so basically if he took here you would take on b6 and if he took on f1 you take on a8 uh, and i think uh, white is fine his knight his knight is also trapped my knight is also trapped but i can come i can take at this one pawn he cannot take yeah so if he goes queen d8 then you take on c7 take and take this i'll be pawn up right and you are pawn up correct so he played knight f4 you played d4 and he long castle yeah at this point uh, what was the feeling like i mean were you i i, I don't know if you no, remember no, he played this and when he played g h6 g5 hmm. that time itself i could, i sense that he is going to long castle uh, and uh, obviously it has to, it has it is going to be a very uh, wild game because uh, i have to attack on the queen side nothing else and uh, all at the same time i have to attack and also defend myself on the king side mm. so so it was like uh, attack counter attack game and it was very thrilling game and okay move on i'll tell you then so you took knight d2 and uh, korchuna is beginning his attack uh, on on this wing with his two rooks and pawns and you are trying to look at uh, the b6 square here he defends it uh, f3 to bring your bishop into the game so that 
you can attack b6 yeah. event h5 queen d2 what is his move number now uh this is uh move number 21 yeah yeah here i want to say something because you know that the those days the time control was uh, uh 40 moves in two and a half hours and uh i think both of us were in terrible time con time pressure already and we yeah yeah already hmm. so that's why already i think i had something around uh 20 uh, 20 minutes or so less than something like that and he was also having something like that and at i think from move number 28 or 27 uh, we both had a few minutes okay after just okay you carry on carry on and the, there was no increment back then so it was like you could lose no, no, on no. time it's not at all. Increment system was not at that. Absolutely. At all. So it is 20, 20, sorry, two and a half of us, 40 moves. Then one hour, uh, 16 moves hmm. each. And then half an hour finish. Okay. So that was like 20 and two and a half hours, 40 moves mean five hours. Then six hours, seven hours session. Oh, seven hours game. Unbelievable. Uh, and uh, so Rook F3, oh, and he sacrificed an yeah. exchange. So all this, all this now started. I think this must be move number 25, 26. Yeah, 25, yes. Yeah, so all this started now, the, all the, the time pressure. And you know the funny thing, uh, we had stopped writing, okay? Hmm. Because uh, we, uh, when you have less than five minutes, you can stop writing. Right. And uh, the tournament director was, I mean, chief arbiter was Stuart Ruben. Okay. And, uh, and this game was so much... Uh, uh, all the people they started seeing coming, all the other players and all these things. So what happened? He himself sat down in front of our board. Mm. With, he took a chair and then he started uh, noting down. Okay. Mm. So we are so engrossed with this game and from 27 or 28 move number till I think 52 oh. or 51, we played. And uh, because the rule is, once someone's uh, clock uh, will fall, and then he'll the, then the arbiter will intervene, and the arbiter will say, "Now you both write down all the moves." Mm. Okay, so he stopped us, said, "Okay, now it is time to write down all the moves." Okay, and that moment I realized that I am winning. So that point <laughs> that will come. Wow. So basically, you guys didn't stop at move 40 and then start thinking again. It just in the flow. We didn't know. We didn't know, we didn't, we didn't know how many moves exactly, they Exactly. Exactly. So in the flow, we just started making moves. And maybe he was also thinking that, okay, I'm a young boy. I might make mistakes in the in time pressure. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So knight f1, uh, b takes a4. So he, right now you are an exchange up. But uh, Black has a very threatening attack with all his three pieces uh, here. Uh, so you are you are on the defense for a bit. C4, H4, and uh, C5. Wow. So this was already like if he takes on G3 now, I think you wanted to perhaps play Queen F5 give, check. I give Queen F5 check, and then pawn takes pawn. I think. Yeah, and there is no mate. Now there is no mate here. Exactly. Because rook h1, king h1, queen check, king g1, and uh, my h2 is, is is yeah guarded by knight. Yeah, but if suppose here in this position he tries to play queen d8, then also it's a big trouble because rook c1 is a uh, is finishing him off. Yeah, like it looks really scary. No, no, e, not, no, 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 not rook c1. So what? No, just queen c5. Ah, queen c5, okay. And then knight c6 is post. And then you take pawn takes knight. Because here again, no check, no check, no mating there. Yeah, if he gives this check, you can simply give up your rook for it. And then this yeah. king is getting uh, mated. I don't know that's getting mated. Yeah. But okay, it was, it was, uh, I mean, at this point, it's a winning position for white. Yeah, yeah, c7, c7. Yeah. Simple c7. c7 would. c7 and d7 check. Forward by d7 check. Yeah. Correct. So he, he played uh, d into c5. 
you pushed d6 it was it mm. was a thrilling thrilling encounter king b6 rook oh rook swung over king a7 uh, queen a5 bishop c8 uh, knight e3 yeah all these things were yeah queen g3 yeah he first played c4 you played d7 ah uh, yeah yeah i mean there there could be lot of variations uh, here yeah yeah in between there are lot of variations where i think i also should have played something like first uh, queen a5 or something like that okay we are not going to into into the analysis yeah 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 so we played queen g3 i saw i played king f1 yeah king f1 h3 g takes and he went knight d and now now no 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 it's just for now he had a chance to take a draw check 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 ah cool. see queen f3 king g3 this is a draw i cannot give it mm. i cannot escape i mean i have to come king f1 yeah you have to come king f1 and then draw and uh, this would have been but i but he, he, i think he wanted to beat you yeah 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 of course he thought okay why why draw Why a 16 year old boy from India? <laughs> Why should be shooting? Yeah. yeah, and and his move is not silly because he's attacking this e1 rook and also threatening a mate on f2. So you went rook king e2. Okay. I think with this move may, he may have missed perhaps. Possible. Because because if you go rook e2, then, then I think queen f3 is winning for him. Yes. 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 Because I don't have anything on the queen yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. So here, knight e one, queen g four, and now you are able to exchange the queens because otherwise he loses the knight, and somehow this end game mm. uh, starts to. Although you are two pawns down, but this knight is in trouble. This pawn is hanging. Even this pawn is hanging. So it turns, and you have a passer here. So yeah. So I am a pawn down. I am two, two pawns, pawns down. down. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, okay, this. actually when i was playing i thought okay uh, i could survive mm. this because of my h pawn only and i am and his knight is uh, b8 knight is the uh, is not coming and uh, this knight on c2 is something little far and i am taking the e5 pawn so i thought i can hold this so i played bishop e8 i think this is move number 1 yeah this is 44 50, 54 move and he still replayed you you are still years. thinking it's still time yeah. pressure and still going fast yeah, yeah. knight a1 ah uh, knight a1 is a knight a1 is a very very bad okay move. and after that he did he didn't have any chance hmm. maybe knight d4 or knight b4 check and knight c should he should immediately take the knight to back to the king side right. anyway so knight a1 you played bishop e8 and then Oh, here good. you took. Actually, you could have taken uh, on f7, but instead you you took on c6. Oh, yeah. oh, no, yeah. no, yeah, I could. I uh, immediately I saw this mm -hmm. winning. Okay. H4 and, and, and this H4. pawn is just rolling forward. He he quickly tried to come back. And I think, yeah, I think this position was that. Uh, now I think we have to stop somewhere here. Uh, Arbiter said, "Okay, you stop and write down the moves." Then I found it's winning. You, you calculated it all right. till the end here, uh, and now comes yeah. a very nice blow. I think we'll ask the viewers here who are watching this: What should White play uh, to finish off the game? Very nice finish. The in next three moves. I think I, I think many of them will say because it has already been shown many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course this is a very very famous game in fact we have a nice video on chess base india as well where uh, dibendu ji is talking about that game and also pravin thipse uh, india's uh, third gm and also uh, dibendu ji's good friend also remembered this game because he was one of the players in this event yeah yeah he was there yeah, yeah. Yeah, as uh, you rightly said, lot of people in the chat have found the move knight into e5. Uh, that was correct, and then knight h8. And now actually, this is another very nice move, uh, knight into f7. The yeah. knight cannot handle both these pawns, and so e5, uh, threatening e6, e7, and e8. 
Oh, uh, how was how was it like? Uh, how did you celebrate this win? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember. But yeah, of course, uh, as soon as the game finished, and you know, I mean, uh, we are playing in London, so but uh, everybody started clapping. Uh, those who were watching the mind okay. this game, and it was huge, huge. Uh, uh, this thing, I mean, uh, um, all over the. Am I? I mean, the world. Uh, India, yeah, all over the world. This gave a good, good mm-hmm. coverage, and this was my first international exposure. I mean, people could come to know about Correct. me. That okay, there's a because uh, before that, I think only once uh, Mr. Aaron, he played with Fisher and he played in the international. But this beating someone in the second world, this is the first. So, so basically, I would say this is one of the biggest wins for an Indian uh, chess player in the history of Indian chess. I think this would be the biggest first win. I mean, later on, of course, Anand went on to score many victories, but uh, this this is one of the biggest ever. Uh, so, in that way, you you are a you are a trendsetter. You you actually helped. Uh, uh, other Indians to believe that we could beat anyone because Korchnoi was just behind Karpo and he he had very close matches with Karpo at World Championships uh, at that point. Yeah. yeah. In fact, after this game finished, uh, we analyzed for uh, I think uh, half an hour or so, and uh, he was only showing that he was winning, he was drawing, and. and I was like a young boy. I just uh, said yes, yes, yes. So because uh, we just wanted to see what he's saying, what he's analyzing. And after I remember after this, uh, our post mortem analysis, uh, there is a lady player, uh, Rani Hamid from Bangladesh. Uh, she was also there in the, during this tournament, and she wanted to have a picture mm-hmm. with uh, uh, Karshnai. She requested whether we can have wrong a time, yeah, wrong he, time. Was, uh, <laughs> he was so angry and he was so upset and he said no and then he ran oh. away amazing and and uh, after that also i played against uh Koshna in yes. the interzonal yes, I saw that. you drew him over there, there uh, i do and he was it still he remembered the my, that game and he wanted to de- again defeat me take the to that take the revenge but somehow i could draw so so this is a only two yeah, games. Yeah, you have played. a plus score against Victor Korchnoi, which is amazing. Uh, mo- moving to the the next uh, image here, uh, what is this? I mean, I I didn't get it. Are you playing a simul against? Uh, I mean, somewhere. The simul. This the simul was organized. After, I think this was in eighty two. After I be, after I came back from this London, Lloyd's Bank, this uh, victory, uh, Korchnoi. This simul was given in in the in the Gurkhi uh, and uh, this man sitting over there. Hmm. Uh, yes. A legend. Satyajit oh, Ray. it's Satyajit Ray. And wow. yeah, Satyajit Ray, and uh, he was the chief guest, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, he was he was there. Okay, he was there with his son also, Sandeep Ray, and both of them were there for about I think an hour and. He, I mean, just uh, just uh, I never thought that I could meet uh, Satish Ray in person, and so he was Amazing. there. Yeah, this is this is the picture. Yeah, moving on to the to the next picture. I think this is amazing that uh, you you uh, interacted with Satyajit Ray. Uh, this is, I think, a little bit further in eighty six. Uh, I, yeah, I there can, is. I can recognize one player to on your right. Uh, I mean, on <laughs> your right, but on the left, that is uh, Pravin Ji, Pravin Tipse. Uh, Pravin who Tips. are the other Both two? Of Both of us played. Other two are local uh, players from Bangladesh. Okay. This is a tournament that was played in Bangladesh, Dhaka. And Capstan tournament, uh, I think it was uh, all play all. I don't remember that format. And I won this beautiful trophy. I won. I was. I, I won tournament. Amazing. Okay, and I, I, I really like this picture. This is, this is such a, 
such a nice picture uh, with you <laughs> young young I, how, how old would you be like 18 maybe 18 years old uh, this is i think during that uh, lloyds bank right? oh okay 16 maybe yeah so it is in uh, london i think yeah but pravin might say because he remembers everything <laughs> yeah, memory is fantastic has, he has a great memory so, so i will ask him Pra- yeah pravin myself pravin in middle and that is tn parameshwaran ah he was very very international master and very very i mean very strong chess player and very good fine friend of mine okay so we in three very nice uh, and now now coming to this uh, beautiful picture again this is uh, vishy anand uh, and you on the left and and who who is the person who's who's showing the finger <laughs> that's my father oh your father <laughs> wow this so, one of the one of the function uh, felicitation function in calcutta and that is the third one that is standing that is tn parameshwaran hmm. and uh, my father and uh, i think he was giving some tips to anand <laughs> do this don't do this something like that <laughs> So t- tell us, tell us, uh, how how did you meet Anand? Uh, when was the first time? Was it somewhere in nineteen eighties? That early nineteen eighties that you met him? Yeah, I met him in the National Junior Delhi. Uh, National Junior Delhi when what was it? Eighty one. Okay. Eighty one, I think. And uh, yeah, there he used to come. He used to wear a cap. and uh, in lad and, and he used to uh, move his he used to make his uh, move first and then he used to roam around and uh, see other games and uh, talking to other players and there we came close mm-hmm. and after that we became friend is like my younger brother friend yeah. and we played many tournaments together we were the teammates were the roommates i had the opportunity to be his roommate also mm. in 1988 uh, chess olympiad in uh, uh, greece in thessaloniki and we were the roommates and we played lot of tournaments together in fact uh, world junior 86 also norway we played together yeah anand is actually 3 years younger to you uh, but yeah. i think when he arrived you might have been the stronger player yeah at that point Yes, yes. I was already uh, about to become I am. I think I was that time. Yeah. So uh, we used to we we used to discuss a lot of things about game and all these things, and uh, uh, we are very close. And his uh, mother used to come uh, used to accompany. She used to accompany him, hmm. and uh, auntie was very good. I mean, she also used to tell a lot of things to me. and uh, in fact uh, they have invited me to come go to chennai to his house and uh, prepare together but okay somehow it didn't happen mm. in those days i am telling right. it is right. saved it but 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 when you and, saw anand at that point me, yeah sorry go on tell me tell me no i was saying when you saw anand at that point did you ever think uh, that uh, he would he would uh become like five time world champion like seeing his qualities back then or or, or you know uh, were they different at that point something something different definitely because he was he used to play a lot of, very fast i mean uh, that's why everyone used to call him lightning kid and uh, you know i mean uh, <clears throat> when he used to when we were playing together in some gm tournaments in calcutta in we played many gm tournaments together close to tournaments together this uh, tata still open here mm. and then vilora gm then coimbatore gm uh, so many gm tournaments all over india and uh, you know i mean uh, all the top players then like pravin myself raja ravi shekar tnp ravi kumar all the big names in those days mm. uh, we uh, we used to think uh, we used to make some strategy how to make anand think Okay. The opening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so even even if he thinks, say, uh, I I remember, so I think it was in Bilwara, Delhi, in one of the some I, he was playing with uh, with some player. I don't remember the name, and then he was thinking uh, in the opening. Okay, 
uh, I think he took some 10, 12 minutes, which is very, which was very unusual in that at that time, hmm. that period, because he never used to take time. He used to just play very fast, but because he's so good. I mean, intuition uh, and his uh, uh, thinking process is fantastic. So, well, so then uh, at one point we saw that he's thinking, he's taking time, <laughs> and that time you won't believe all of us were so much enjoyed. That yes, yes, see, see, Anand is thinking. See, Anand is thinking. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that is something, uh, used to be something uh, great for a player to make Anand think. Right. Okay. But yes, of, of course, he was, uh, those days, uh, that time itself, which was, uh, he was far ahead of uh, all of us. Mm. And, uh, you know, training wise, preparation wise, and also his uh, analyzing power, definitely uh, mind, mind blowing. I mean, we, it was difficult. It would have been difficult to catch what he's saying. He used to say blah 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 this move, that move, that move, and then final voice. <laughs> <laughs> I I just so checked far. in the the mega database that you and Anand have played against each other uh, for uh, six six on six occasions, uh, and uh, we played 10, 10, 12 games. And last time we played uh, in ninety two in Goodrick in Calcutta and uh, that time he was the first GM, I was the second GM. I just became Grandmaster and after that, that was my first tournament in Kolkata. Anand played and you know, and somehow the organizers, they paired us oh. because they thought this is the right moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think was third, third round or fourth round, I don't remember. And as soon as they got the chance, they paired both of us so that, you know, that spark will be there. Yeah, that yeah. attention will be there. Correct. There's a huge, huge uh, uh, attention, and uh, I mean, it, I mean, you could cannot believe that. The, and our game uh, lasted uh, long. Yeah, fifty-six the last moves. Game to be, I saw fifty-six moves yeah. you played. Yeah, it was the last game to be finished, and uh, you know, in the that Kurki Shadan, there were there were about ten, twelve. Uh, uh, demonstration boards in the main main uh, main playing room, and all the demonstration boards they were showing my uh, this game, and in fact at certain point the, there were so many uh, spectators, players, and enthusiasts, and all the media, so they were forced to uh, put something in the uh, lobby also, and our game went on, and then. Uh, finally, I could manage to draw, mm. and I was, as usual, I was struggling uh, from the middle game, and it was double bishop against bishop and knight, and every time it was just like he's winning, then I was, I somehow managed to defend, and okay. then it went and I did do, and and after that we analyzed the game. I, I must tell the viewers that what a moment it would be because uh, they were the only two grandmasters of India at that point and them playing against each other, uh, unbelievable. Uh, in fact, Sarvanan and... is the ch is in the chat and he's asking you, uh, tell us about the prank that you and Anand played on Praveen Tipseji. <laughs> 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 no, no, no jokes, no nothing. <laughs> what, what prank? We <laughs> no, we actually we are so good friends, and uh, you know when I will not on, on Praveen, I'll tell, I'll tell. We did. Uh, we used to make a lot of prank. I mean, we used to make a lot of jokes with others, and uh, Anand was actually was the main uh, Ben child, and he used to give me a lot of ideas. But people <laughs> never, never. Never suspected him. So they everybody used to think that it was me only. Okay, <laughs> and, and and we used to. Uh, I know. I mean, uh, we landed in uh, Norway in Gosdal. Uh, we are. We, I mean, for the World Junior. Before that, I mean, before I mean, somewhere in the transit, we stayed myself, uh, Anand, and our manager was um, from South uh, Sheshadri. Mm. Shashadri was the manager. Shashadri, yes. Shashadri, yes. He's having a lot of you know, books, yeah, right. small books right. on the yes. And he was the manager, okay. And as soon as we landed in uh, some place, I don't know where it was, on transit. So, uh, 
uh, we got one room. We shared one room, myself and Anand. We checked in the room. And Sashadhi also took key and he was also one room. And as soon as we entered, Anand, we said, okay, we'll make some jokes about with the... Uh, we play, we play with uh, Sashadji. Then uh, I took the phone, that intercom. Okay, those days we didn't have any mobiles or anything. So I took the intercom and put the hanky on the, on it and so that the sound will not be recognized. Okay. And then I told Mr. Sashadji that someone is waiting for you from the Air India <laughs> and you come down. Okay. And he don't remember. And he immediately went down. And then went down and we went, we had... <laughs> We were, we, were watch, we were waiting to see what was his reaction. So we could see that he came out of the room and then he went to the lift, went, went down. Then we both we went to down also, just as if we had to see. Then we saw Sasha doing. He was very upset. And we, uh, we asked, what happened? He said, no, no, I'm not, man. I, I, I got a call and uh, someone is waiting for They said that someone is waiting for in the reception. But no one is here. What is this bullshit? All these things. <laughs> then we started laughing and came back. And like this, we used to make a lot of jokes. We even made jokes on with uh, Mr. Koya also. Okay. Uh, when he was the secretary. But okay, that was a long one. Amazing. Amazing. So yeah, this is these are stories which we would never know if it was not for you. So thank you for sharing them. Um, yeah, and... first time, first time telling all these things in <laughs> Here only. No yeah. one knows those. Absolutely. Absolutely. And which is this tournament? You and Anand both holding uh, trophies. Oh, this is not a tournament. Yeah, this is not a tournament. This is a felicitation, felicitation in program in Kol- Kolkata. Right. So, Calcutta Chess Club, I can see that uh, both of you have been yeah, felicitated. Yeah, they've been felicitated. And it was, I think, uh, 90 after, after we came back from the Olympiad. And uh, in the 90 Olympiad, I won the gold medal on second board. Okay. And uh, that was one of my biggest achievements. Uh, uh, who? Oh, what was your score? Do you remember in the 90 Olympiad on board number? Two? I, I think know. eight or eight and a half. Well. Okay. Because. And you know, and and you know that one thing is I I'd like to mention. Hmm. Uh, on the last last round, last game. We were, we were, Indian team were paired with Czechoslovakia, right? And uh, the USA team captain, they came and they were searching our Indian team captain. And I think captain was uh, Ravi Shekhar, I think. RRS was the cap- captain. And uh, what they wanted uh, to confirm with our Indian team captain that I am playing in the last game. Okay. Because I was already, I was already in the medal winner. Ah. Uh, if I, even if I don't play, I would win the gold right. because of my percentage score already. So, but uh, they insisted, no, 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 no. Yeah, Anand, Barua, uh, they all should play. You cannot uh, give Barua rest. Actually, I was taking, I was hoping, we were thinking of taking rest. Hmm. I was, uh, uh, the Indian team was thinking that I, I will take rest so that my medal will be confirmed. You know? Right. But then this request came uh, from the USA and uh, then they said no no because of that they are uh, because of our if we make draw with the Czech uh, with the Czechoslovakia then they would be finishing top three or something like that and then uh, Ravi Shekhar say, came and asked me what to do hmm. so I said yes I'm ready if you think that I need to play for the Indian team so I'm ready even if I okay I might lose uh, gold but uh, I will win uh, in Russia, Russian chess team. Wow, wow! And and uh, al- also, I'm checking the the results uh, from the Olympiad, and I see that you beat uh, Peterson two five five zero. Then you beat Marquez, who is twenty two hundred and fifty five rated. You beat Michael Adams twenty five ninety. You also. Uh, I have a, I have a result. I have a good result against Michael Adams. I I defeated not only once, I defeated I think two or twice or thrice. Yeah, absolutely. I think also in the interzonal you managed to beat Adams, uh, if I'm not mistaken. No, no. No, 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 no. no. Not in the interzonal, other tournaments. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, and yeah, this is this was some uh, brilliant uh, play by you. You remained undefeated, I think, in the in the Olympiad. Yeah. You won the gold medal. Yeah. 
amazing amazing moving on uh which is this picture here here i can see michael adams on the left of the screen uh he is there then i can recognize you uh but but i cannot recognize all the other players i do i don't know now this is that natwest grandmasters tournament and it was in 88 hmm. and uh, this was here only i got got the first uh, grandmaster norm and uh, uh, the both the sitting grandmasters one is on the right yeah on where's the picture yeah yeah can you see it can you see yeah, the yeah. picture yeah so this is a stuart conquest stuart conquest is on the left and the right one is uh, hebden Ah Michael yes, Hebden. Mark Hebden and, and, and uh, Stuart Conquest. And standing, stand, standing next to Hebden is David Bronstein. Really, I was I was going to say that. Yeah, he looks like Bronstein. Wow. So world championship challenger I, Bronstein. Uh, I had the opportunity to play against him, and I managed to draw with black. And of course, uh, Michael Adams is there on my right, yeah. extreme left, and then myself, then Watson. on behind right barsania yeah. and this is this is uh, colin this is costen grandmaster costen i think okay and then is colin macnaff aha uh -huh. and one more that is i don't remember others i can't remember okay okay and uh, one more player is missing that is uh, niaz morshed ah from bangladesh so we are on come on we are Ten players or round robin, and uh, here I got my first GM norm, and by defeating Stuart Conquest on the last last round. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I I found that you defeated Conquest two times. Uh, one of the games was uh, what you wanted to uh, check here. I mean, what we should look at. But I think you beat him once in uh, British. in 1985 british championship uh, but yeah this natwest one was in 89 when you also defeated him mm. both the games with black can we can we have a look at that game with stuart conquest yeah yeah sure okay so uh just a second i'm just trying to fix uh, uh some things uh. yeah yeah it's fine uh okay okay things are back things are back i'm sorry for uh, this small interruption uh yeah so so coming back to your game at uh, conquest uh, this was not in 1985 actually this was in 1989 yes yeah yeah Okay okay we are back uh, and this time i hope that there will be no real issues uh so so we we dive into the game uh and 
this time you are playing with the black pieces against Stuart uh, Conquest. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Can you just flip the board? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, now we are back. So he it was a, a Queen's Gambit accepted. <laughs> Don't ask me why I played this move, that move in the opening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is my my way of playing. <laughs> G4, Bishop, uh, G6 you played here. Knight E5. And already I think white has a small edge, but black is very solid. You broke in the center with uh, C5. G5, mm -hmm. uh, Knight H5. He played rook g1, supporting the pawn, queen c7, bishop a2, takes, takes, and uh, very, I think this move would have surprised him, yeah, bishop into a3. <laughs> Possible, yeah. But here, queen h2, I don't know, I didn't play, I didn't know. Maybe nothing, okay, just asking. Yeah, queen h2. Or queen g4 maybe some nothing hmm. nothing great here yeah. okay yeah 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 so bishop a3 he took on e6 so it was a blow for blow you took on e6 and it looks like uh, you have a position which is slightly weakened because your pawns are now weak but uh yeah but i but i like this first of all i needed win uh, because of the grandmaster now okay because this is all play all tournament and you know the target okay yeah. and uh, and uh, because uh, i thought okay this is possible this will keep me give me some chance so so this will give me some chance hmm. hello yeah yeah so that I, I i was happy because although although i am a pawn down and also Slightly so weak, but I thought okay, his king will be in the middle, and we can I can do something. Right. So you castled. He went knight e4. You went queen to c6. Rook g4. Queen d5. Bishop e3. Knight b6. Very slowly, I think black is uh, main problem for white is the king, uh, which is in the center. And you managed to take advantage of it uh, with your queen moves, queen f5, uh, rook b3, knight d5, f3. And it's quite amazing how you managed to coordinate all your pieces very, very well. Uh, all of them are in the game. b5, e5. Mm. And he couldn't he couldn't really take the pawn because there would be a deadly pin here so he took on a6 ed queen b3 king h8 knight g3 queen e5 rook into g6 knight takes g3 rook takes g3 d3 uh, now threatening a check after this loss yeah knight e7 and rook at six takes Bishop c3. Well, he's just a rook down uh, and he resigned here. Pure brilliant game. After, after knight d5, queen f5, that structure is bad for white. After b5, I mean, that position is bad for white. So, just a uh, technique or just uh, this person is that for I white. think uh, what is very instructive is this assessment that after bishop a3, Bishop e6, f e6, rook a3, castles, that this position would be better for black at some point because this knight which looks at the side of the board is actually very well placed. Another outpost is on d5 for the knight and you will put f5, uh, there is an outpost and rook d, I mean, I guess uh, assessing this position was not very easy. Yeah, but uh, I don't think I have assessed on this, this the way you are saying <laughs> during the game because I was not I was not made like that. Uh, I just played on my own and I thought 
this will give me chance this will keep give me chance to win that's it the only because of the uh, attack counter attack i mean he has to defend the king and uh, i've got so much of play i can push e5 and after playing knight b6 stopping d5 i can push e5 and open that then e and d5 so that's why i just played so i okay now of course uh, this weak square and then assessment uh, honestly speaking i have never assessed any positions or then like that way nowadays the youngsters they do because nowadays they are they are trained like that way but we are not trained we used to play on our own our Absolutely. instincts Absolutely. Uh, whatever it is to come from our inside yeah, okay yeah. we have abhijit gupta in the chat who says please ask uh, barua ji as to why people call him mr president <laughs> <laughs> that is the, i think they respect and i was the president of the uh, chess players association of india cpai which was formed in 2005 and uh, 2004 i think 4 yeah 2004 we have uh, formed and you know the in that time koya was secretary mr koya was secretary and uh, he made one rule that to cut some 10 percent from the prize money of the players prize money so we all players together we are united and that is the first time that uh, the uh, players forum we have done the players association of india and i was the president okay okay fantastic uh going back to some of the pictures uh we have one more here which is a beautiful one which is uh you anand anand greeting a young girl i don't know who he who she is and there is also neeraj kumar mishra uh, on the left yes when is yes this yes kumar mishra neeraj was this is also in calcutta in one of the one of the functions i think anand attended and uh, i think uh, and he is a very good friend of mine he is a good friend of mm-hmm. anand also so we all together we grown up and in near jors also contemporary mm-hmm. my right. time so yeah thanks. okay okay uh, and this is also uh, with uh, satyajit ray yes ah this is no no this jyoti basu the legendary jyoti basu jyoti basu Wow. Yeah, yeah. He was the chief minister for in Bengal for last what many years? I mean, thirty-four years. Thirty-four years. The left front they have uh, ruled, and he was the chief minister for twenty-four years or something like that. And uh, Jati was so in the, it was the opening ceremony of Commonwealth Chess Championship being held in in Kolkata in ninety-six, I think. Right. Uh, actually, uh, I I would tell the viewers that uh, the Benduji was perhaps the most successful and the most famous uh, sports personality in Bengal before, uh, let's say, the cricketer Saurav Ganguly. Would that be right to say? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe possible. <laughs> Because I think uh, the way you uh, you were. famous there and uh, the number of people who know you the i think chess in west bengal became very popular because of you a lot of people started playing chess yeah yeah, yeah that's true uh, because uh, i started playing and after i achieved so many things and of course i mean in what in bengal it was due to maybe due to my yeah. playing and uh, sort of yeah we used to share uh, same uh, desk same uh, uh, room uh, we both uh, used to work for tata steel guy left in 2017 he's still there and uh, i could remember yeah we uh, he, i mean uh, hardly we used to go to office but whenever we used to go office together and we used to share a, room, a table and a chair <laughs> both of us uh, hardly i mean we used to meet in 90 293 year after after he he uh, this uh, lord's test after he became uh, very popular yeah, yeah. 
and also i think right now uh, west bengal is one of the powerhouses of chess in india uh, of course tamil nadu has the most gms uh, but after that it's yeah after and what have we have yes, eight grand grand masters uh, surya shekhar ganguly nilotpal das sandipan chanda saptarshi roy saptarshi roy choudhury uh, nisha mohota there are so many top strong players who have come out from the state i mean world class uh, sandipan chanda uh, and i think this is uh, sorry yeah diptan ghosh the young and now master. there are so many ims like aranya ghosh mitraba guha and i think the next uh, stage it's uh, even growing further i think it wouldn't have happened be- uh, without you you know you you started to get it rolling from there uh, uh, we have to talk about this picture because this has anand you uh, aruna and your wife saheli uh, when was this taken yeah it was uh, it was in uh, i think it was in goodrick during goodrick anand and aruna both uh, but uh, i don't know i mean, i don't remember which year but uh, i think it was in during one of the goodricks or maybe some felicitation program anyway uh, he both of them came and yeah we we met and we are very yeah. good friend we still during last uh, tata still tournament also uh, we had a good time absolutely yeah yeah of course uh, in fact uh, i i would really want to know a bit about your wife uh, she has she is a strong uh, chess player wim uh, and uh, how, how did the two of you meet of course uh, during a chess tournament yes <laughs> yes of course in 91 uh, during the lords bank and british championship tournament and uh, that's all started and we got married in 97 and uh, she is uh, international women master and she got even one wgm norm then uh, okay couldn't she could not finish the other other norms and uh, she is the behind of all these academies she is only looking after and we have started academy in 2005 and that time it was dibinder burua chess academy is my name and from behind she is only looking after all these administration work and everything so yeah, i was after. i was at the tournament you organized in 2018 and i could see how much uh, she was working hard behind the scenes and uh, Uh, i think uh, you both make a brilliant pair uh, with uh, both of you promoting chess in such a big way thank but, you but was yes. uh, i mean I, we don't go into too many details right now but was your like uh, love story uh, very simple like you both fell in love and got married or was it like uh, with lot of ups and downs yeah there are lots of so ups and downs out of uh you know i mean very uh, memorable moments uh, but of, of course i have so yeah 91 to 97 6 years and uh, those 6 years were prime time of ours <laughs> and uh, we still would like to go back to those years brilliant <laughs> yeah of course um and moving on i think uh, we come to you as an organizer i think one of the uh, one of the best tournaments uh, these yeah, have been is. held this is in 2018 but i think you have you have organized several big uh, rating tournament international tournaments actually i started organizing tournament in 2006 okay. uh, when i after i we both when the academy started academy then we thought okay let us do organized tournament for the kids for the chess and the name name of the tournament is chess for you and uh, we have organized 12 editions and uh, each edition uh, there are many i mean uh, the numbers were increased first edition was to 256 players in 2006 and uh, the last edition we saw playing around 900, 900. players and chess for it abhi uh, gupta and many youngsters they played in my tournament because it's just for youth is a very uh, attracting tournament for the youngsters 
we have got a junior section and the premier section junior section is for only for the bengal players where this category to na category wise the 6 8 10 12 14 16 and the premier is open to all i mean up, up to 25 years and uh, there are some selected invitees invited players were there and somia isha a uh, lot of uh, uh, youngsters they played who became afterwards became very strong yeah. grandmasters and uh, then i we organized also many cup many eating tournaments then uh, asian team we I have, we have organized in 2009 uh, that was one of the very uh, notable tournaments and then uh, 2013 15 and 18 three international open grandmasters tournament i have organized and this is the 2018 edition and uh, yes. nigel shot he was, was a busy there. man at that point he, he was see. trying to run for the uh, fide presidency i mean he was about to begin but this was his last tournament i would say before he started doing that and there's sandeepan chanda nilotpal das saptarshi roy choudhary and deep sen gupta uh, all top mm-hmm. Uh, players of uh, west bengal in fact abhijit gupta in the chat says i have played there a few times the conditions were so good that it is impossible mm-hmm. to miss such a such an event yeah yeah abhijit gupta played there thank you abhijit for the compliments and of course I, because i i am a chess i am a player him myself I and mean, both of us are and myself so what we do before uh, when we organize the tournament we personally we visit each and every place like the lodging place uh, where the players will stay even the grandmasters no, not even the grandmasters even the, the rated players i mean those who will pay and uh, stay we all uh, uh, guest houses uh, hotels we personally visit and see whether it's up to the mark or not then uh, we ta- we try to take uh, each and every measure uh we survive uh, we survey ourselves and then once we are satisfied then only we brilliant. go ahead brilliant it is uh, amazing and i have asked lot of gms who played in your tournaments and they have all had the same opinion that if uh, barua ji is organizing the tournament it is not worth missing because i i know a lot of effort goes behind it and uh, as kishan gangoli who is one of the uh, people in the chat he mentioned yeah. that Uh, the blind chess team uh, of Kishan, Aryan, Sondarya, yeah. Ashwin, uh, and uh, Subendu—all five of them were preparing for the uh, blind chess Olympiad. And uh, in your tournament, you gave all of them free entries, free lodging, free boarding. It was a great gesture. Oh no! Actually, yeah, it was our also. It was our pleasure also to have them play in our tournament. and uh, yeah as soon as i mean whenever players they appeal that they need some help or in terms of say entry fees or in terms of anything we are there to help and we are really uh, we are lucky to have all of them playing yeah you told me then uh, yes. you have referred us that is they want to have play our and uh, we we are really happy and uh, uh yeah they they were preparing for the yeah, their yeah, tournament help them a lot in fact sondarya after a few months the the boy in the center he went on to win the silver medal for world junior uh, blind and i think it was this tournament played a big role uh, in in that achievement so wonderful uh you you are here watching the games of the young generation and i have to ask you what do you see uh, now the future of indian chess uh i mean from second gm that you were in 91 it has gone all the way to 66 now uh are you are you very excited about the future prospects of india yes yes obviously i mean uh, the youngsters the way the youngsters are coming up and they are achieving it is absolutely fantastic and uh, of course due to the unfortunate uh, uh this uh, it is held up i mean for the last uh, few years i mean uh, every year we are we are getting um, four five grand masters in i became uh, after anand became i became second gm in 91 then pravin became third gm in 1998 which was a, a huge gap but uh, uh, but then 
we have in last 20 years, we have more than yes. 60 grand masters, which is absolutely, I mean, that means each year on an average three. And uh, in some, in last few, uh, some of the years, uh, even uh, one year, it was like no, four or five. There was one so every year time, which we had you know, eight GMs. I think it was 2018, where we had eight grandmasters in one year, which is simply amazing. Fantastic. Amazing. Because, you know, every time I people ask how many GMs, we say some numbers, and then we found, no, no, it's not correct. And so uh, that is, that shows that how the Indian chess is progressing and it is absolutely fantastic. And I think it is, it is just because of uh, uh, efforts uh, efforts by everyone. I mean, uh, the, the the federation, the players, the organizers. So all KDs should yes, go to absolutely. everybody. Uh, so and also players are very, very, very talented, all the players. And uh, like Praga, like uh, Nihal, they are really yes. our future. And uh, some Ron. Ronak is coming up, their Divya is coming up. So absolutely fantastic lineup and this Olympiad we saw there are many uh, youngsters they are taking place. They are now actually all the youngsters are only in the team yeah. except Anand. So that way that way definitely I would uh, congratulate Anand also because <laughs> at this age uh, he's maintained it's absolutely miracle. I mean it's uh, amazing and how he's maintaining his uh, you know, performance, I, uh, and uh, obviously Anand, Anand is the uh, inspiration to all of us. I have us. this picture of uh, you and Anand here. This was, uh, you see, maybe somewhere in the 1980s when both of you were here, and now this is in 2018 when you met Anand in Mumbai. Uh, it's a, it would have been, it's such a nice feeling to see the two of you together. There's so many memories that go back in time. Uh, you you must be uh, telling Anand, yeah, like how how do you manage to continue playing even at this age? It's it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. And uh, I will tell one uh, story about uh, both of us. And you know, I mean, eighty eight was my first uh, Olympia, right? That was in Greece. And uh, in on the last game, uh, I was white and I was winning, and I needed to win to to get an all. GM norm. Okay. And I was absolutely there were there are options uh, whether I can go for a queen against rook or I can go for an exchange up is a winning position. So I was so excited that I am I am winning that the final game and I'm getting the norm. So I just ignored that uh, exchange up position. I landed up with a queen and rook queen against rook. Okay. So I promoted and then I saw in my opponent's face, he was happy. Till before that, you know, he was struggling and his face was... So I was... All, throughout the middle game, I was having an edge and I was giving pressure. And that moment I met the, this beep on queen, he was happy. And then I realized this is a fortress and I cannot win. Oh. And I was so upset. And uh, because my first gem now gone. So I missed. So I was very upset. And that at that time of time, okay, obviously Anand and myself were the roommates. And then Anand told me that he came to me and he said quietly that Dipu, he used to call me, he calls me as uh, Dipu. That's my nickname. Okay. And he said, don't worry, uh, you are knocking the door. So you'll be GM soon. But, but don't become GM <laughs> so soon. Let me enjoy for five years, then you become GM. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> so I was actually touched by his uh, say that he will were knocking the door, so he will be GM. So, and then he said, "Deepu, don't be G become GM <laughs> now. Enjoy <laughs> five years of my <laughs> this thing, and then you become GM. And I became GM in one. Yeah, yeah. And it's exactly." You let him enjoy for a for for a period of four years, and uh, you, then then you became a GM. Also, I I think your your friendship with uh, Pravin Thipse goes back uh, way way back in time, uh, and uh, this one uh, on the left and on the right. Yeah, yeah. we are still we still chat, or uh, and also we, uh, many times we call each other and. 
He's a good friend of mine. Man. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, yeah, what about this now? I think uh, important to know where you are still make appearances on the chess board every now and then. Uh, any plans of playing chess regularly? Yeah, I think so. I, every time I think, but then, then I think, okay, uh, how to come back? Because, you know, all the youngsters, they all got prepared. But uh, okay, I am ready to, I, uh, what I do is I take the challenge and I say, okay, let me play. Let them try to beat me. I'll try to defend myself. Let's see. And, and uh, yeah, I, obviously I like to play. Uh, and um, uh, I don't know which tournament this is. This, this is IIFL, some... IIFL GM in Mumbai, I think 2018. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, yeah. yeah after a long time I played in, in India, some tournament. But you uh, are... Yeah, I, uh, also I played last year uh, in uh, in Czech Republic. I played three tournaments there. And uh, this Pardubice and uh, Olomouk and Prague Open. And this year also thought of going and playing some tournaments in summer but okay due to, to this situation definitely not possible so yeah once in a while definitely i want to play yeah we will because we, i can't i mean I chess can't is within it. you yeah yeah you can't leave chess you have been playing it since you are six years old for the last 50 years now so it's uh not easy yeah, yeah. Up to about yeah 50 years yeah <laughs> Uh, and you are also a very accomplished trainer. Uh, you have an academy. Uh, how many students would be there roughly in the academy? I've got two centers. Um, in uh, one is in Salt Lake and uh, where I live, and one is one is in the South Kolkata in the main city. And uh, and uh, both uh, together it's somewhere around three fifty. And uh, okay, because of this. Uh, lockdown and uh, so on and we've started we are doing it through online and uh, yeah you know uh, there are some you know, plus points minus points in the uh, online coaching so there are many many youngsters many young kids they they are unable to cope with in the in the online training i mean you know five years six years those who are in the beginners group yeah yeah so yeah but uh, all put together yeah still you know, Good, good amount, good numbers. Sure, sure. I mean, yes, a uh, lot of young talents coming up from there. Before, before we let you go, how about seeing one, one last game of yours, uh, which is, I think, uh, a fantastic game. Uh, actually, there were two options uh, to look at. One was against uh, Kurt Hansen, and the other one was against Predrak Nikolic. So. Whichever one you you prefer, we can have a look at that. I mean, from the BL interzone. Yes, yes. Yeah, maybe Kurt Hansen will say. Okay, let's have a look at Kurt Hansen game. Uh, I mean, both the games were phenomenal. But, uh... Yeah, this uh, BL interzone. I was I played uh, that was I, mean, I think one of my best tournament performance tournament. You were uh, close because, uh, to qualifying for the candidates also, right? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, at one stage. I was uh, having uh, six and up out of ten. It was a thirteen downs tournament, and then I needed, I think, one and up, two out of three is for sure to qualify for the candidates, and one and up is safe. I mean, for tie. But then I lost uh, two games, so that's the reason. I couldn't qualify, but there I, uh, I had a very good uh, uh, thing, uh, performance. I defeated Abramovich, then killed Georgiev with a peace sacrifice. And uh, also Topalo, if I'm not it. mistaken. You beat Topalo. Also Topalo. Yeah, we had also with a very good finish with a Bishop into G7 sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And Actually, Topalo That's, resigned yeah. after you took on G. And I saw that game. That was also a very nice game. Yeah, and Kurt Hansen also. I defeated him in with black. So you can see this. Okay. Uh, before we go, Abhijit Gupta asks, uh, please tell about your fascination towards French defense. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> after that, I uh, this uh, paid first is Philidor. Then Petrov, then 
uh, friends and uh, you know i mean i'm having i have a very bad result and uh, you know i mean when i uh, started playing french at some point uh, sashi told me that uh, french is 10 <laughs> so i was so uh, upset and i was so angry against him said, what is this french is 10 and wow okay yes because uh, you know people they come prepare long variations i remember that the surjo gamuli that uh, yeah. he used to prepare when i used to play petra he used to play he used to prepare some variations which was very long say uh, 19 moves or 20 moves i have to remember right and he knows very well that i can't remember mm. okay so after four five moves or six moves uh, inevitably i will make some new uh, some move i will forget and i'll make some move and <laughs> and the game will start from there okay and uh, and that's why he used to prepare a very long long variation where it has to i have to go through uh all the opening knowledge uh, there it is and i asked him why you choose this no no i know that you will not remember so that's <laughs> yeah so we uh, french yeah, french uh, i'm still playing french hmm. and now i am passionate but uh, i have to think about playing something else again <laughs> <laughs> maybe okay, petrov again what... petrov again would be a good idea like like you go back like now petrov then later philidor and then you <laughs> yeah maybe that's that's a good session maybe yeah petrov actually uh, at this age maybe it was yeah. it was very solid also karuana has revived it a lot in the recent times so could be a good idea so going to the game against hansen you were black and uh, it started with uh, him playing d4 and and uh, usually in such structures it is said like white has a small edge because he has space and also uh, knight in the center uh, like he, maybe he would get a maroxi bind like structure he is offered in theory <laughs> sorry that is according to theory yeah yeah these all are according to theory but <laughs> and you don't you don't, don't care know. about theory Oh, those just what I do, what I can do. I don't know theory, so I have to believe and die on my own. Yeah. In, uh, okay. So knight c two, uh, d six, e four, uh, and you played in g seven, uh, bishop e two, castles, castles, and now uh, comes the logical break to gain some space back with f five. Uh, he took, he took with the knight, bishop f three. king h8 just making sure the king is tucked in and he took here a, a little bit surprising yeah this decision to take on c6 yeah take yes. take queen d3 queen h4 uh, b3 knight h6 and and yeah. I, i really like how you how you now manu i think now i can Yeah, there's a good knight maneuver. Yeah, I think maneuvering is one of your strong points. How to put the pieces on the best square? I think you do that really well. Like here, knight on f5 was in the way, so you moved it. So knight can go to g4, bishop can come to f5, and you know, like putting all the pieces in the right square. <coughs> bishop b2, bishop f5, queen d2, and now the knight jumps in, threatening a mate on h2, h3. Ninety five and uh, unsuspecting. Threatening bishop. In... Threatening. Threatening bishop in trace. Yeah, bishop. Bishop, bishop in trace. Correct. Yeah, I think you're open. At minimum. At the minimum, yeah. That's because because if he takes, then there is knight f three check, and then you lose the queen. So he played knight a four, and his idea was if you take on h three, I will first take on e five, perhaps. Mm. and then and then maybe take back <clears throat> but now here yeah, yeah, that brilliant piece sack came yeah yeah here came uh, a great piece sacrifice knight f3 check did you how how long would you have calculated i, I mean did you go through like till the end or it was more intuitive in nature the sacrifice no up to certain point i went uh, Uh, some six, seven moves, and then I thought, okay, something will be there. Some intuition because his pieces are on the all on the queen side, and it would take some time to come. So I just 
on my intuition, some calculations, so obviously, initial stage. Yeah. And then, of course, I did not see till that. So he took at this moment. Yeah, you took and now you took on c2 which was again a nice move queen takes rook into f3 and things are not so clear because he he is you are a piece down but also your king is a little bit exposed so there could always be some check uh, from any of these squares and the pieces could come into the defense so you had to be very careful he went rook a1 and i think what you did next was very very impressive like here it could be easy to go wrong with rook into h3 when queen e4 and queen g2 would just defend everything. But you found the, the nice move queen g5 check first. Uh, he had to go to h2 and now you brought in your last piece into the attack. Rook. And now I think after this is no defense maybe because his f1 is hanging. Okay, hanging in that sense he cannot play rook e3 that... Yeah. To get rid of this and he cannot play uh, you know make queen e4 also because he, then rook f2 will check he played we, this in the game we lost uh, ah, okay queen e and then uh, also this is a nice finish where you were not afraid of his checks and you played queen g3 which was a very nice move uh, because now there's a mate on h2 so he gave a few checks of course, if, if rook e7 check here, I think uh, after king h6, and no, there are no checks, then no checks in this position. So he went queen even e7. Even instead of queen e8 check, instead of queen e8 check, yeah. just go, go back here. Now queen d4 check, king g8, rook e8 check, king f7, no check. Nice, nice. Great calculation. Yeah, this is hard. so he he saw here checked and queen e3 exchange but now this rook end game is just uh, hopeless because you are two pawns up uh, and you went on to convert this uh, very easily very nice game beautiful i mean the this part starting with uh, not just knight f3 was beautiful but this entire idea with knight h6 getting the bishop out uh, getting the knight to g4 was so well done uh, very well done and then culminating in this sacrifice uh, and then a mate very very nice uh, brilliant actually uh, the the game with nikolic which is the only one left i i really want the viewers to see it because it shows your style in such such uh, amazing light <laughs> Uh, because first of all you uh, i want to show is it okay if we can just have a look at it in last 5 minutes yeah okay I think I think that I think I think the youngsters they will like it because of my ori original play. You will see that. Uh, so absolutely, this game actually pick up, pick uh, shows your uh, real style. You are white. Yeah, played about this. Yeah, yeah. Knight f6, knight c3, g6, bishop e2, bishop g7, and uh, h4. Yeah, directly going in for the attack. <laughs> No, pre uh, no preparation. Yeah, like I don't need to ask you, but still confirming. You didn't prepare anything on the board. No, never on the board. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I used to play that. Even now, also sometimes I play this also. Bishop e two. I still play. So he went h five, stopping. Uh, you went knight f three, and when he played castles, uh, you went knight to g five. In the position. And uh, now comes the interesting moment. C6. So black wants to go B5, gain space on the queen side. So uh, the Bianduji stops it with A4. Uh, so, like like beginner, you know. <laughs> like beginner, there's a way now. Whenever there's a threat, he just he just stop that. Yeah. No. And the and the funny <laughs> thing is that you have played H4. You have also played A4. So the king is kind of. Uh, confused which side he will go to right now, but we'll see in the game what happens. Knight g4, f3, knight at 6 bishop e3, d5, and now queen d2 takes knight e4 because you didn't want to give up the g4 square, so you didn't take with the pawn, you took with the knight. Uh, knight f5. I want, to, I want to break. At some point, I want to break with g4 pawn. Uh, 
So knight f5. And now this move, I think uh, I would, uh, I mean, would be really worried to play this move. First of all, you have played the pawn to a4. So your king is not 100% safe. <laughs> Secondly, you are losing your key bishop, which makes the bishop on g7 very strong. I mean, how, how did you come to this move like long castle? No, I just uh, thought, okay, there's, let me play this. And, you know, I mean, uh, again, I'm telling, I used to play, I, I had the belief on myself that, okay, whatever I play, I'll try to play over the board, overcome over the board, and I'll try to find out. I will play my own, my own style. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I was confident. I mean, that's right. Yeah, yeah, confidence is uh, is the key. So, uh, Nikolic took on e3, queen e3. And now uh, the main thing is that g4 cannot really be stopped. So he went knight d7, mm. g4, knight f6, take, knight takes, and you went f4, which is like now attacking the knight here. Uh, he went queen a5, you took, takes, and uh, who cares about this pawn? No one. Uh, so you went knight g3, uh, trying to attack him further he went uh, bishop f5 here yeah. <clears throat> ah, otherwise queen e4 is coming if he takes queen into a4 then queen e4 or queen yeah queen e4 is coming or maybe queen d3 i don't know no queen d3 then sorry ah yeah queen d3 Possibly. and with the threat so if f5 then you can move to maybe f3 i didn't do no no i think uh, possible or i can take knight into h5 also yeah sure you can take uh, so maybe yeah, here, only one uh, a better move to knight g3 could have been bishop g4 but the problem is after queen e4 f5 there is this check yeah like the bishop and is locked out and then queen g6 mate mate absolutely there is a mate happening here yeah yeah so he went bishop f5 and uh, you took and, and this is a nice position where now your king is very safe. His king is exposed. So just simple rook at g1, looking at the king. King h8, king b1, <laughs> rook ad8, uh, queen e2. Now, now threatening to take here. He went rook d5. There was, there was no real way to defend that pawn. Takes. Okay, because queen g6 means, queen g6 means anyway I'll play f5. Yeah, absolutely. And he could, I mean, this is just uh, groveling in this position. You may even take yeah. this pawn, yeah? Yes, yes. So, rook d5, uh, queen h5, king g8, queen f3, rook d8, h5. Now the h pawn is coming to h6. And queen a3, king e8. I don't know why this, why this queen a3 move. Okay, maybe on e7. I don't remember now. Yeah. I don't remember now why he played. Okay. Bishop d4, h6, bishop into b2, uh, rook d5, queen d5, king b2, uh, queen h1, h7, queen h6, queen b3, threatening uh, check here. He played queen f6, check, king a2. And actually, this pawn is so strong that even the exchange down doesn't matter. And now the final blow. I think I'll let the viewers uh, find this move. Uh, but this is the last question for the day, guys. So, white to move and win. Very easy. Very easy yes. It's easy. Very easy. They will all... Anyway, this... No, it's just like they, they can make the final move uh, that, that you played in this game. Uh, it was such a tremendous game where you long castle, uh, you gave up your bishop on e3, g4. It was it was the original style of yours. Like uh, all everyone says, don't move the pawns in front of your king. Everyone says, don't give up your dark squared bishop against a fianchetto bishop. But you kind of broke all the rules. And yet you won against a world-class GM. Nikolic is a strong GM. Yeah. yeah. And absolutely everyone. And this tournament I was in. Yeah, this tournament I was in very good form. And uh, yeah. Would, would you say this is the best tournament of your chess career? The the interzonal in. 
obviously it is uh, interzonal bl interzonal and then the second tournament would be uh, that uh, novisad uh, olympiad where i won yes a gold medal, gold medal. yeah you take here you took and nekolic resigned because if he takes knight takes and then you make a queen next move uh, stopped it was it was an absolute honor to to have you uh, uh, dibendu ji on this team yeah, actually uh, yes please no no yeah i was saying it was it was a big honor to have you uh, and uh, i you know i wanted to know more about you your beginnings in chess how you did uh, how you grew into such a great player second grandmaster from india beating korchnoy at the age of 16 going to uh, play the interzonal for india uh, becoming three times national champion and later on also uh, winning a medal at the olympiad for the team and and you are you are doing so many things i i would say like you are a you are an organizer you are a coach you are, you have you have contributed so much to indian chess uh i think uh, you are you are one of the pr- uh, most uh, important people that uh, indian chess has and we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for for doing everything that you have done for indian chess thank you thank you thank you so much for inviting me on your show and also you are also doing a great job and uh, i think uh, all of us doing all the players they are making india pride proud and uh, also the organizers the federation people and uh, individually also a lot of people are trying to promote chess and our motto should be that chess should reach each and every house yes and uh, yeah, and uh, because now it's the online era uh, and it's a virtual era and uh, technic- uh, technically we are sound chess is such a game and we all are, all should uh, come together and uh, start doing promoting chess so that each and every one will play chess because chess is such a game which helps everybody not only the kids is everybody all generations yeah so it is my request each and every one you and others those who are doing individually come together and promote chess do not should not have any uh, enmity among us ourselves and whatever differences we have we should uh clear it openly yes. honestly and we should we should all should uh, together uh, try to make a house even the gens unasumos we are family right Correct. and uh, that spirit that spirit should be there to each and every one and uh, without hurting anyone without criticizing anyone without saying anything to anyone we should come together and promote chess and you are doing absolutely fantastic i mean uh, in personally you and all the chess players also some of the chess players they are also now uh, a lot of chess players are doing on youtube yes. trying to promote chess so everybody is doing fantastic job thank you so, so i really appreciate i really appreciate each and every one to make chess more popular and uh, let us do it absolutely let us make chess much more yes because because you know i mean at the end of the day when you see that cricketers they get more importance than chess where uh, 100 and more than 180 80 countries participate and uh, you know last 7 uh, years 6 years 7 years our players do not get recognition in the from the government uh, so it is our duty all the chess players and federation and organizers everybody to fight together to you know to so that people will understand what is chess is yeah absolutely to make people make to make people understand to make the government understand that what is chess is and how much how much efforts we are giving because you know i mean it's uh, someone finishing uh, in the top 10 uh, is something very incredible job but uh, don't get recognition yes like uh, like last few years uh, no one has got uh, arjuna award yes chess from chess absolutely which is very sad part it's very sad part because we have got many players you see those who have uh, excelled there those who are being in uh, role for country 
so it is a high time it's high time that we all should work together absolutely i think Let's, yes it should work together i think your final message is very nice which is chess to every house uh, in the country and that is something that we'll all work towards uh, together uh, and uh, thank you so much uh, once again and i hope to see you soon in person uh, in some tournament in the days to come Thank you, sir. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Guys, what a what a wonderful session we had today with uh, the legendary Tibendu Baruwaji. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed. In fact, going through all these uh, pictures with him uh, of his uh, chess, right from him being uh, a six-year-old boy. to becoming a grandmaster to the one uh, you know who who beat korchnoy and then uh, spreading chess in such a big way like meeting legends like satyajit ray and uh, you know achieving things outside india like bangladesh here and uh, you know one of uh, the contemporaries of vishyanand uh, giving him a tough fight in in just about every tournament that they played together uh, until a point uh, and uh, i i personally enjoyed this show tremendously and i hope you did as well and now organizing tournaments uh, helping a lot of players in the chess community who need the help coaching chess players uh, and also himself not given up the hope of playing chess i think this is a complete uh, chess personality for you Uh, and i hope that uh, all of you learnt a lot from him uh, i'll see you guys again very soon thank you all for your time this is sagar shah signing off bye bye